amen, amen. Blessings and glory with dumb thanksgiving and honor, power and might be unto the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are highly lifted up, Jesus. Lord, we worship your holy name. Lord, we give you praise. Amen. Power in my power in my be unto the Lord. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving. Oh, man, I've got to send that lady to the most in the end of my heart. I'm going to get those stay on the Monday 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 to get those stay on Folks, we're just gonna um, we're just gonna talk about that song for a little bit. You see, the Bible says, let me share with you very quickly two things, and then we're just gonna take that song one more time, and then you all can go. Let me say this very, very quickly. In 2023. Even if you don't believe that you exist, even if you doubt whether you're still alive and you can't be convinced that the sun is still in the sky, in 2023, do not doubt the faithfulness of God. Let me tell you something. I tell you, you can take this to the bank. God is faithful. Oh, absolutely. God is faithful. Let me tell you something. I today was waiting on the Lord. You know, when, when you're expecting someone to do something, and you're like, okay, I'm going to just wait and see what you will do. You see, because I had been taken to a place in intercession, and it left me so broken. You know, because it's not every time that you intercede for people that you come out of intercession feeling victorious. There are times wherein you intercede for people and when you come out of the intercession, it's like the burden is still there. Jesus was praying for you and I in the garden of Gethsemane, but it was almost as if there was just not, nothing moving. Even after the angels came and ministered to him, you didn't see him bumbling around. Because sometimes the warfare is just that way by nature. And so today I said to the Lord in my heart without even opening my mouth, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I feel the heat of where you have taken me, of the things that you have shown to me, of the brokenness that I see. And when I was saying that in my heart, I was hoping that the angels will come that very moment and minister to me. But nothing happened. So you know what? I, when that happens, this is my default setting. When I've been somewhere or when things are going on around me and I expect that the angels minister to me and they seem not to show up in that moment. You know what I default to? I default to what David did when he was under so much pressure and he didn't feel like heaven was immediately making help available. What did the Bible say? The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. So I encouraged myself in the Lord. I went outside. I spoke in tongues for like 30 minutes, just back and forth. I was just walking. It was raining, but I was walking around the house so I could stay under the shed. And I was praying. And after a while, I felt like, okay, there was a release. And I went back into the house only to find out that there was still more to be done. But I say all of that to say that when I came in here tonight, 
on the way I was encouraging myself again I said Lord I know that part of what I'm feeling is because you need me to be alert to the needs of your people and so I'm okay with it I'm gonna live with it just because of the end that is before me so when I came in here today I was still you know just getting a feel of what exactly was going on and how the Lord will come through for me and he did in a way that I could not have imagined you see that song that y'all did was one of my favorite songs growing up it was a song that we would sing when we were children and when everybody else was still smiling I would be in the spirit and I never told that to anybody but I would sing that song every time most times when I am at my lowest I would sing that song and unbeknownst to me I don't even know how did y'all know that song who came up with that it was my wife ah she snitched there you go because I'm like who knew that song and I'm so thankful to God because of the fact that I have engaged heaven and I know that for your sake today there will be deliverance in here there will be deliverance there will be prosperity in the spirit and there will be peace on earth father in the mighty name of Jesus we give you praise let's all be seated one minute thank you guys God bless you so much you have been a blessing to me tonight more than I can say hallelujah and let me tell you something if that is not a good insight into 2023 I don't know what is I do not know what is praise God oh my goodness oh I'm glad I am glad I am glad oh yes to be honest if I have a sack full of money today I would be dumping it on these guys but I give God praise because as you have watered you shall be watered yourself and thank you Rosemary I know you were in the spirit uh, for making that happen I'm excited I am delighted praise the Lord so tonight as it is our custom when we are having a watch night service what do we do communion house we pray Oh yeah, that's what we do. We, we, we do what? We pray. So get ready. The ministers who are leading prayer tonight, my wife, Alan, Manuelita, Kenyatta, and John are ready. And they will be coming up in, in order very shortly. But just so that we can get right into some of the things that are very pressing, Tia, Hawaii. Good to see you. Some of the things really present. If you all have seen the, the Christmas photos that we put up and the Ariel's birthday photos, they were taken by Tia. Am I, is it okay to let people know it's you so that they can bother you? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Alrighty. I didn't even ask for permission, but um, she's the one. And, um, and I can say that um, it's such a blessing to have you gift that to us. We appreciate that very greatly. God bless you. Alrighty. So tonight, I am going to say a couple of things and I would love to say them very, very quickly. So once the room is a little bit orderly, we will begin. But just before then, I want to say this. If I let me just even begin saying it, you know, because we don't have that much time. The Lord said to me today, very clearly, you see, the last couple of days, I've been, I've been in different places. You know, even though I haven't really left the house, I don't even think I've gone anywhere apart from yesterday. We, we took Ariel out to eat for her birthday. But for the most part, I have been going to places. And I'm so glad because one of the places that I was at that was very mysterious to me, Alan was there too. You see what I mean? You know that we do a Wednesday one hour prayer meeting on Instagram. How many people don't know we do one hour on Instagram if you don't know? Okay, so we all know. Yeah, but I don't, there are people here that I've never seen there. I'm not looking at anybody now, but I want to encourage you. You see, mostly what we do that hour is just speak in tongues. And what is speaking in tongues? What are some of the advantages of speaking in tongues that you all know? The Bible says in Jude, in the book of Jude, verse 20, I believe it is, that we need always to build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. I don't think there's anybody here, or at least there, there aren't that many people here that have yet to hear me teach around what it means to have a most holy faith. Do we know what it means to have a most holy faith? You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
And so if your faith is going to be most holy, then you must have a word from God that is undiluted, a word from God that is not corrupt. And that happens when you speak mysteries to God. Speaking in tongues is sending messages to God over an encoded channel that the devil cannot eavesdrop on. Even if the forces of the air intercept what you're sending, those packets are encrypted. They cannot decipher them because there is only one entity that knows what you're saying when you're speaking in tongues. The Bible says he who speaks in tongues speaks in an unknown tongue and how be it he speaks mysteries unto who? Not to heaven, but mysteries unto God. And so when your messages are being delivered, angels are not even attempting. You know, there are different tongues. Sometimes you speak in the language of angels. You know, we talk about warring languages, praise languages. But when you're speaking in tongues and praying in the spirit, you are speaking directly to God such that your messages have to be delivered to your heavenly father in the same envelope of secrecy so that he alone is able to unravel it and then fill it up with the res response that you desire or that you require and send it back to you in such a way that only he is glorified. You understand what I mean? And so when you know that, then any time there is a call for there to be speaking in tongues, what do you do? You find somebody. I mean, you jump on it. It's good to pray in tongues on your own, but there is something dynamic about praying in tongues together with other people. Something very amazing happens. And let me tell you the way that heaven's shown me what really goes on. Because you know me, I like to probe into everything. I'm like, why is it that when Alan is leading that worship, I mean, that prayer, it feels different. When, when I'm praying in tongues alone, it's not always the same. You know, there are different experiences, but when you're praying in tongues with other people, particularly if they are people of like passions, people that are like-minded, you don't want to be praying in tongues of people who are trying to impress you with their vocabulary of tongues. You know, sometimes you go for meetings and some people want to let you know that they've been born again since the spring of 84. And so their tongues are more diverse than yours. They want to oppress you with, the, with their lingual or linguistic ability in the realm of the spirit. You know, such things are done out of the flesh, albeit with a spiritual authority. You understand what I mean? Because it is possible for you to wield spiritual power, but to allow the flesh to rob you of the integrity of delivery. That is the reason why some people have the gift of prophecy and yet they're prophesying out of the flesh. Yes, yet using a spiritual instrument to do it. Does that make sense? And so there are so many people, so, several examples in scripture. Saul was anointed to be king and with all that anointing, he was still living in jealousy and in frustration. And so it is possible for people to, who are truly gifted by God to actually be used by their flesh and hence by the devil. So, these people, I'm not saying that their tongues aren't genuine, but what I am saying is that the heart behind the tongue is not necessarily of God. It might not be pure before the Lord. But when you are with people who truly just want to see the kingdom come, when they're praying in tongues and you are praying in tongues, what happens is each one of those tongues, because of the fact that it is a mystery, it is not merged on the same channel with that of another person, they create a special channel in the heaven. So you guys have a wider heaven when you're praying in tongues. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Can I borrow your water, sweetie? Or maybe even coffee would be better. Charles, if you can make that happen. Oh, is there water in here? Don't worry, we're good. And Tom Tom, if there is any. Oh yeah, yeah water is for mortals. So I'll just do the coffee. I'll wait till it comes. But in any case, let me say that again very slowly because I know some of you all got it and some have yet to get it. Imagine if I am trying to siphon water from a tank to a little vessel and I just have one hose run in the water eventually it will get filled but if there are some if there is another substance that i want to put in the water so let's say i want to put some liquid chlorine in the water some chemical in the water it dilutes or it dissolves in the water and it still goes through the same pipe but if i have another substance that will not fit into the same pipe what would i have to do i would have to lay another pipe and so because of the fact that multiple pipes are penetrating the heavens, the opening becomes even wider. And that is the reason why it feels different when you pray in tongues with somebody else. 
Alrighty. So when Alan was leading that prayer on Wednesday, I was taking up in the spirit and I had an experience that I had never had before. I've been in situations where I was groaning, groaning in the spirit and running from one end of the room to the other end of the room. <clears throat> but this time around, it was different. It was almost as if my body was no longer available to me. It was like an out-of-body experience, but again, I knew that I was still in that body, which reminds me of what, what Paul said. Paul said, I know of a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. He said, but he has heard words, I thank you, that must not be uttered. I have had very close experiences to that. Thank you, Charles. But this time around, the Lord gave me an opportunity to have the full experience to the point wherein, like Paul said, I heard words that must not be uttered. I heard words and I started to question within myself that is it even possible for human beings to make sounds like this? The words were, they were sounding like words, but then at the same time, I didn't feel the capacity within me as a human to be able to pronounce the diphthongs that I was hearing, not the syllables that were being sounded. Those are words that even if you try in your flesh, you cannot utter those words. And I was delighted, I was excited within my spirit when that happened. But at the same time, in the same token, the power of darkness is weighing so much on the earth that even though I have had such an experience, in the past, if I had an experience like that, you would have heard about it. I wouldn't have waited until Saturday. I would have been so excited, I would want to say something. But then at the same time, the Lord was helping me to have a balanced approach to the things that are going on in the world by letting me know that it is not enough to just have such experiences. It is only going to be enough if we together as the body of Christ, are able to use such experiences, whether happening directly to us or happening to other people around us who share with us, as I am doing now, to maintain our position until the Lord comes. Because the darkness is coming and the darkness will force some people back to the streets. Remember the five foolish virgins. When the darkness came and they were out of oil in their lamps, they were forced to go out to the streets and by so doing, they missed the Messiah. They missed the bridegroom. And so I want to encourage you folks that we have come to a time wherein resilience is one of those things that we need to manifest the most. And remember that resilience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. In the old King James English, what is it called? It's called long suffering. Long suffering is the word that we have come to know as resilience. You have to be resilient. So I want to share with you what the Lord shared with me because after having had that experience and again also seeing the state of the darkness, the Lord said to me because he noticed that I was about to stop and he said to me, he says, breathe. You see, there are things that would happen to you. I mean, even in the natural, we know things happen and we say this thing takes my breath away. Those are things in the natural. When you, look at the, when you look at the prophets, many of them at different times, they will see things in the realm of the spirit and they will be as dead. Let me say that slowly because I don't want you to miss the picture. When someone says that when I saw the angel of the Lord, I became as dead. If you died, who wrote the story? If you died and rose up again, who filled in the gap for you? Have you ever wondered? Wherein they would say that they fell upon their faces as dead. Look at Peter, James, and John. They fell on their faces as dead. But yet they were able to recall the things that happened when they said they fell to their faces as dead. Until you experience it, you may not fully understand what really goes on in those moments. Can I tell you what it means to be as dead? To have your breath taken away. <laughs> the only reason why you're alive is because you're breathing. The moment you're not breathing, you are as dead. So when those guys say they were as dead, it's just a way of saying that their breath was taken away. They were in awe. They could no longer breathe, but they're still there, very conscious. Ah, you're not getting it. Let me help you. Because there is a significance to what I am saying. You see, 
I was in that situation and I became as dead. And the Lord saw it coming. He knew that the things that I was picking up in the spirit, some of which I was still not even some, I hope to share it all with you as we get into the coming year. But I'm only just sharing with you the experience at this time just to help set the stage for what is to come. You see, when I was where I was and I, coming back from where I had been in the realm of the spirit, I was as dead. He took my breath away. And the Lord said to me, breathe. He said to me, breathe, just keep breathing. And when he said to me, keep breathing, that was when it occurred to me that a lot of us, what typically happens to us is that we'll go through situations that take our breaths away and we we'll stop breathing. A very practical example is this. Many of us, we find ourselves in situations wherein we believe that we have let God down. You believe that you have done something. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The Bible says he that walks in the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. The Bible says that to be carnally minded is what? Is death. So that lifelessness, wherein you don't feel comfortable to approach the presence of God. Wherein you don't feel comfortable to believe God for things because you think you have done badly. When you find yourself in situations like that, what is going on is you are allowing yourself to be in the state of death because of sin. And the Lord says, that is the time that you need to breathe. Because man by himself, without the breath of God, is nothing but dust. When God formed man out of the dust of the earth, did God breathe into the man? No, because there was no man. The Bible says, and God breathed into the dust. And then the dust became a man. It became a living soul. So if we, without the breath and the life of God, you and I, we are nothing. And so every time something happens to you to stop you in your tracks, that is the enemy cheering you on to, to hold your breath. Because the moment you start breathing, you have the life of God again and you can overcome all things. So in the year 2023, you need to make up your mind. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you will take a stand today and say, I will not let anything take my breath, whether something wonderful or something terrible. Praise the Lord. Because sometimes it is not just the wonderful things that take our breaths away. Like what the Lord had shown me, where I was coming from. I saw an army of the undead. I saw an army of people that once were, ceased to be, and then they came to be again speaking an ancient language. I recognized it to be an ancient language because days before that vision, an angel of the Lord came to me and he whispered to me that there are languages that no longer are. So it set my expectation already. It precipitated my mind to be able to receive what I was walking into. And so when I heard those languages, let me tell you something, I can't even describe to you fully, but to think about it is to just find yourself like in the backyard of someone's house and suddenly assembled there in your presence. It wasn't like they were there when I got there. They started showing up while I was there and they were an ancient army. I heard them and I saw their fellowship together, their camaraderie, and it humbled me to the point wherein it took my breath away. It was such an humbling experience, but the Lord said to me, keep breathing. You know why? Because if I allowed what I was seeing to be too wonderful for me, I would deny myself the spirit of that moment because I needed to be able to take it in. Remember that song that says, the glory of God is so wonderful, I scarce can take it in. I can hardly take it in. And that was what happened to Jesus and his disciples every now and again, still speaking about wonderful things that take our breaths away. When Jesus walks a miracle, like when he told the son, when, when he said, peace, be still, and the storm and the billows ceased to be, the Bible says they marveled. They were like, he took their breath away and Jesus said to them, he says, do not marvel. He always said to them, marvel not, marvel not, because you needed to breathe in that moment to take it all in. Now that is on the side of the wonderful and many of us want to have wonderful experiences, but when you do, breathe, take it in, inhale the spirit of the moment as opposed to the wonder of the time. Let me explain that again. Because many of us, the world teaches us 
to be sensual. The world teaches us to be emotional. The world teaches us to be sentimental. So we always just want the wonder of the moment and we miss the spirit of the hour. But the Lord is saying, don't just stand there with your mouth open. Take in the air you need to breathe. Because in that very moment, to breathe is to remind God that you know that without him, you cannot be sustained in his presence. I wish that was the only thing that the Lord said to me to say, but when he told me to breathe and that thought came to my mind, he said, that also you must share. That when we are going through situations or we find ourselves in situations wherein sin has reigned in our bodies and we want to walk away even further from the presence of God. I've told you the story before of a cobbler that lived at the end of our street. No, he didn't live there. His shop was at the end of our street when I was growing up. I invited him to church. I was about the age of 12. I said to him, Joe, you need to come to church. <laughs> and he laughed. You remember the story? <laughs> he said, I, I can't go to church. I said, what do you mean you can't go to church? He said, it's an insult and disrespect to God for me to show up at church. I was like, this is an interesting one. Tell me, why is that so? He said, I am in the privacy of my home doing things that God does not approve of and he has allowed me to be. He said, why should I then go to his presence? I said to him, here I am, look at me and my sins. He said, so it's disrespectful for me to show up. I had to sit him down and lecture him and said to him, if you remain in your home doing all the things that you've been doing, God is not just letting you be so that you can continue to be that way. He's allowing you to be by his mercy so you can come for him to cleanse you. But many of us are like, Joe, we don't want to go in God's presence because we feel like we are not worthy of that presence. We allow our sins to take our breath away. Whereas we need to take in the breath of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Wind of God, for us to be able to continue to move. We like to sing the song, I have the life of God in me. I have the spirit of the Son of Man. I have the life of God in me. But do you truly have that life if you do not? You deserve to continue to wallow in the merry clay. This is how I like to sound, like an archangel. I love it. But at the end of the day, here is the deal, y'all. It is not your place to remain where Jesus has taken you from. You need to keep moving. For you to move, you need to breathe. If you do not breathe, you do not have life. If you do not have life, you do not have motion. Things that are dead do not move. Except in the movies. Because in the movies, they say the zombies are dead, but they can still move. But in reality, for you to be able to keep moving. And when the Lord put it together for me, I was excited because I know 
that as we have come into this new year, you know, we received revelation that we have already pressed into the new year from September. Toward the end of the month of September, we pressed in to this new year that is called our year of going forth. And what did the Lord say to us? Immediately the word came forth. The Lord appended a, clari a clarification to the message or an elaboration if you would. He said, you will go forth, but you will go forth at my word. So every time we are meant to move, we're supposed to move at the word of God. The moment you catch the revelation of what it means to breathe, to move and to move by the word of God, the enemy will no longer be able to stop you. Many of us will stop praying and we stop obeying God because we think that we have let him down and stay there. But the Lord is saying, you are dust without my breath. Don't remain dust. Just breathe in what I have for you, my mercy, my grace. And that is the reason why he says my grace is enough for you. Why is that important for us to know? On a more practical sense or in a more practical sense, this is the way the Lord showed it to me. God said to me, he says, don't do anything because your emotions are suggesting it. Don't do anything because your feelings are dictating it. Guilt is a feeling. Worthlessness is a feeling. Inadequacy is a feeling. Someone says, but truly, sometimes I just feel like I am unable. Yes, it's a feeling. Because the word of God says that you are able to take the land. The word of God says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And so at the end of the day, there is no reason at all that is justifiable before God for you to allow yourself to be stopped in whatever track that you find yourself in. And so what do you do? Rather than taking your cue from your emotions, from the flesh, and of course, I pray not, from the devil, take your cue from the word of God. Every time you take in that breath of the Holy Spirit, what comes out of you is what? The word of God. You breathe in the Holy Spirit and then you breathe out the word. So what happens is the moment you take in that breath in confidence that if God is for me, no one can be against me. If you take that breath that says that if you have been forgiven, then you are set free indeed. So what do you do? You speak the word of God and say, yes, I can do all things. I am going into the presence of God. I am going to do what God has asked me to, to, to do. I am going to pray for somebody. I am going to preach the gospel. Do you know sometimes even with our spouses we do so badly that when God tells us to go and apologize we still feel like it's too fresh. I can't say nothing. And then we allow several moments to pass. You know how it is? Yeah. You know, let me, let me say it to you. I'm going to just give it to you straight. Okay? Let me just give it to you straight. This is how it is. Many of us, the reason why we are where we are in our walk with God and in our relationship with people, because those two things are important. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see God. The reason why we are stagnant, the reason why we're still like toddlers in relationships with God and with people is because we do not know what we call guilt management. Many of us don't know how to take responsibility without taking the guilt. Because as far as we're concerned and based on the world situation around us, guilt and taking responsibility have been told to us to be the same thing. You break your mom's plate that she brought from China. And when she wants to tell you to take responsibility for your action, it sounds like you do this every time, even though you don't. She's just saying that so that you can truly feel bad for your actions. You understand what I mean? And that is a combination of what? Of guilt and responsibility. So we grow up not knowing how not to feel guilty and yet take responsibility. Have you ever broken the speed limit and, and gotten caught? Not only the police officers will come and tell you you need to take responsibility for your actions. This is how they say it. They first of all ask you, is there a reason why you were driving so fast? And then you lie? That's the order of things, right? 
Or is it just me? Yeah, because if they ask you, Sheila, is there a reason why you're going so fast? Do you tell them, oh, I just got this car and it's moving so fast and I like driving fast? No, you don't say that because even that coming out of your mouth makes you look irresponsible. So we all want to act responsible. And you're like, oh, actually, I just thought that someone was about to die and if I don't get there, they can't be saved. You make something up. Why do you do that? Because you want to sound responsible. But no matter what you say to convince them that you're sorry and you are going to be more responsible next time around, they still give you that citation to make you feel guilty. So that you're looking at it until the due date. And when the due date comes and if you don't handle it in, you know, in other ways other than to show up, you have to plead guilty. They give you an opportunity to, to plead something that is called, in Latin, I don't remember what it is, but it means uh, no, no, yeah, no, no, which means I'm not guilty, but I'm guilty. And I'm like, there is no such thing. <laughs> You're just saying I'm using my first pass of guilt and not too guilty. But then at the end of the day, here is the deal. We take that understanding of the world and we bring it into our relationship with God. God wants you to take responsibility for your actions, but he doesn't want you to take the guilt. Simply because the guilt for everything that you have ever done was left at the cross of Calvary. So for you to take the guilt means you are traveling back in time to before Jesus said it is finished. And at that time, Satan has power over you. Nothing frustrates Satan more than the fact that he no longer has power over you. So what does he do? He takes you back or he encourages you to go back to a particular point in time wherein he has power over you. That was why Jesus said, as often as you have the opportunity, do this in remembrance of me. You need to remember that you're no longer in 4 BC. You are now after my death and resurrection, wherein it is all finished. So bring yourself back into time so that you can enjoy the fullness of what I have for you. Let me prove this to you because some of you all think it does, it, it sounds too good to be true. What does the Bible say in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1? The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 that there is therefore now. <laughs> you may want to read it in your Bible. You know I've been telling you about the word now and then. The Bible says there is there and therefore. The Bible says there is therefore now. What is now? right now in the present and the Bible says the word of God is living and powerful so whatever you see in the word of God is happening right now it says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus so there is really no condemnation so the feeling of guilt that you have is an illusion from the devil so that you can buy into that illusion and let me tell you something illusion and imagination are two of the most powerful time travel machines that we have your imagination can take you into the future, but the illusions of Satan can drag you back into the past. And the moment the devil can get you to that place before Jesus said it was finished, then the guilt actually has real power. And that is the reason why that which does not exist anymore can start to make you sweat, can start to make you feel bad, you feel like your face is in the mud. You know, how, you know that feeling when you just start feeling dirty again because you have let God down? Now the Lord is saying, I want you all to go forth in 2023 and for you to go forth, you need to be able to take responsibility without taking the guilt with it. Drop the guilt, take responsibility. What happens to a man who takes responsibility? A man who takes responsibility does the responsible thing which is to repent. Guilt makes you sorrow. Repentance makes you change. The word repent means to change. Guilt is going to keep you on the treadmill of confession. You wake up in the morning, rather than engaging God on what he has for you today, the guilt comes and you're like, oh Lord, I'm so sorry for what I did yesterday. I shouldn't have spoken to my wife like that. And God is like, yesterday, hmm. And it's like, I don't know, I don't understand. I don't speak that language. You understand what I mean? And so what do you do? You go on lifeless because you could not take in the breath of the fresh mercy that God has for you. And you're like a zombie all day long. I want to encourage you, God is looking for people who are light on their 
feet who are willing to move with the cloud of his glory. If you would allow yourself to continue to be weighed down by guilt or to be unnecessarily startled by the great things that God is doing, you will not be able to move. Now, I'm saying two different things, but they are two sides of the same coin. There are times in our lives wherein the wonder of what God has done is what keeps us from moving because the devil tells you this thing can be real. The devil tells you this thing can't, I, I'm not talking to aliens here. I'm sure you know God has done certain things for you and you're like, oh, I need to behave myself so that I don't lose this thing. The devil will tell you that look at you, Monday through Friday, everything's just been working for you. Huh. You know this streak is about to be broken. Somebody said the other day, he says the biggest burden that we have to carry is joy. And at first I was like, how can joy be the biggest burden? Oh yeah, because some of us have experienced joyful moments because of what God has done. And then we want to now take the responsibility from God to manage our joyful situation so that we don't lose it. In the first place, did you make it happen? God has done something for you and you don't want to share the testimony. Why? Because you don't want to jinx it. I've seen people do that. In fact, how do I know? I used to do it too. Because then you will remember, Satan will remind you, remember when sister so-and-so gave her testimony that she was, she, was, she was healed. Two weeks later, she couldn't come to church because she was sick again. Don't jinx it. God is good to you. Just keep it that way. Let me tell you something. It is not about what happens as much as what you do with it. Do you know that a miracle happened when Jesus fed the 5,000? And rather than that experience empowering those people to go and be the best that they can be, they wanted to resign from life completely and become vegetables. They said, oh, we don't have to go to work anymore. We're just going to appoint this guy king and he will feed us every day. How is that even sensible? He gave you an opportunity to see possibility like you have never seen it. But the fear of leaving the place was the reason why they continued to follow him because they felt like if they would not do right in that moment, they would lose it. No, it is not by power, it is not by mind, but by my spirit, says God. And what is spirit? Spirit is wind. God does not want you to stay there. Remember Peter, James, and John when they saw Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. What did they want to do? They didn't want to move. They wanted to build a tabernacle in that place. And Jesus says, no, you need to take it in and then go forth. So I want to encourage you, whether it is the wonderful or the terrible, whichever one it is, don't let anything stop you in 2023. Paul had that revelation. That was why he said, I do not count myself as one that has attained. He said, but every day that I wake up, I keep pursuing the mark of the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. So don't say because you read all of Genesis in one week, then the next week, the devil convinces you that you need a break, that your brain is saturated. I mean, it's happened to me before, and I don't know, if it hasn't happened to you, well, maybe you're an angel, examine yourself. But for those of us who are humans, we fall for that temptation so easily, wherein we feel saturated. If I let me tell you what happened to me about two days ago, I told my wife, I said, I think I need to take a break from studying. I said, because I'm trying to study, and my mind feels clogged. And you know why my mind was clogged for days? Oh yeah, maybe you have an idea. The reason why my mind was clogged for days was because I continued to study from the last instruction even after I was supposed to have received a fresh instruction. The moment I felt saturated, it's in the Bible. The Bible says that to the writing of books, there is no end, but by much studying, the soul becomes weary. And the person who said that was the guy who wrote some of the most, he was the most diverse author in the Bible, Solomon. King Solomon wrote about astrology, he wrote about zoology, he wrote about botany, he wrote about demonology, he wrote romance stories. He was the author of the first Mills and Boone. 
He wrote detective stories. He wrote all kinds of stories. And that was he. He said to the writing of books, there's no end. I can keep writing. He said, but too much study. He said, by much studying, the soul becomes weary. And so what happens when your soul is weary? To complain to your wife about it? No. To announce to everybody on Facebook, on your status, oh my God, I've been studying so much lately. Now my mind is clogged. And people look at you like, eh, show off, but I like it anyway. Because I'm about to post, and if I don't like this one, they may not like my post. You understand what I mean? That's not what you do. What you do is when your soul is weary, what do you do? You go to the one who leads you beside still waters, and you allow his life to come into you. You breathe in so that you can keep going. And that was what I had to do. So I went to the Holy Spirit, and he said to me, the reason why you're saturated is because you were done, and you're supposed to transition. And he showed me what I was supposed to read. And the moment I opened it, newness of life and he told me he said you will see it will flow until your wife calls you and I was there I was flowing until my wife need, needed me the reality of it is that in this life we need to learn how to continually engage the Holy Spirit and not to be satisfied with anything. Not to say that this amazing thing is worthy of taking my breath forever. No, nothing is that amazing but God. And that same God is saying, I want you to keep taking me in. Keep breathing my spirit in. And nothing is too devastating to make you feel unworthy of the next breath that the Holy Spirit is willing to give. So arm yourself with this weapon of a mindset as we go into 2023. And tell yourself, nothing will stop me. When I feel clogged after studying for so long, I will breathe in and let the Holy Spirit lead me to the next. When I feel broken because of the fact that I've been kind to people and they continue to betray me, what do I do? Rather than complain about them, rather than swear and curse, what do I do? I breathe in so that I can keep going. Whatever it is, even if it is you who is the problem repeatedly, because sometimes you are the problem. And for if you are the problem, be of good cheer. Because that means God can continue to teach you. You don't need anybody. Some people are so nice, so kind, and so consistent that God needs to introduce people into their lives to test them. But some of us, we are a walking classroom and workshop. I can, on my own, pose enough problems that allows for heaven to teach me. I said, okay, this is what you were thinking. I saw you. You don't think like that. I'm like, ah, got it. This is what you just said. Got it. Because if you are like that, it's an advantage, but the devil makes it feel like you are so terrible. How come you're so evil? Let me tell you something. It wasn't long ago the devil said that to me. And I laughed. And I said, you're late to the party. I said, because you know the first person who said what you just said? I said, my heavenly father, and he still loves me. The Bible says, God speaking, that this man that I have made, the thought of his heart, they are evil continually. I quote that scripture almost all the time because sometimes my wife is like, do you not think of anything else other than this thing that you want all the time? I'm like, the thoughts of my heart are evil continually. If you get the joke, you get the joke. Because my wife is like, oh, oh my God. Why? We just, yeah, in the afternoon. And now you're back again. I'm like, yeah. He said, Are you, do you even think of anything else? I said, absolutely not. Because if you think it's evil, then you're welcome. Because the thoughts of my heart are evil continually. So what do I do? I breathe and I keep going. Only Alan got it. I'm praying for the rest of you. Not to be overly spiritual. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, do not be overly righteous while die before your time. And don't be overly wise while destroy yourself. So sometimes you have to balance it because <laughs> you are indeed flesh. God is good. So we're going to read one verse of scripture to break bread. And then we will begin our rounds of prayers. I want you to turn it with me very quickly to the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 8. Songs of Solomon is after the book of Ecclesiastes. Songs of Solomon chapter 3 verse 8 is almost an invisible scripture. It is a scripture that you have to read and understand almost as if you're reading Braille by putting your finger on it. Not literally, but you will understand when we read it. What does it say? It says, They all hold swords being expert in war 
Every man has his sword on his thigh because of the fear of the night. I want us to read that again. If I let me do you a favor because some of y'all are not overly familiar with the Shulamite and the prose and the poem and the poems of Solomon and the Shulamite woman. So we're going to read from verse 6. He says, Who is coming out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the merchants' fragrant powders? You know who this person is, right? The Lord Jesus. He's the one that is coming out of the wilderness with what? With gold, frankincense, and myrrh, right? So before you even see him, you can perceive his aroma, all right? And so what are the, what are the aromas of his, of, his, of his coming? When the Lord Jesus is about to come, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that there will be the aroma of mourning ahead of the coming of the Son of Man. People will start to mourn. There will be sorrow. Sorrow has a fragrance and a very strong fragrance at that. Jesus speaking, he says, these are the signs of the Son of Man. The moon will, 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 give, will no longer give its light. Even the sun will go dim. He says, and then you will look up and you will see the signs of the Son of Man, which are the sons of the signs of the times of Noah. And he says, then the people will lift up their voices and begin to wail. And he hasn't even come. When he's coming from afar, there will be sorrow in the world. Okay, let's see if we can find something that will excite you. But here is the deal. He says, I can smell the myrrh. You see, frankincense and myrrh, when you look at the process of making those things, they represent the process of actually juicing the life out of man in a process that might be sorrowful, but yet at the end of the day, it gives life. When Jesus was about to give us his life, those were the most sorrowful moments of his entire existence. Jesus was sorrowful. And that was the fragrance of his coming. And so, verse 7 says, Behold, it is Solomon's couch with 60 valiant men around it. Which is, you don't even need to have a Bible degree to understand what was just said. He said it is Solomon's couch. What is the meaning of Solomon? Solomon, Solomon is the same word, shalom, which means peace. So the Prince of Peace is coming with his valiant men, right? And it says with 60 valiant men around it, the reason why it is 60, I'll tell you very quickly, because when Jesus is come, coming, the Bible says he will come with what? With thousands of thousands of his saints, the dead in Christ will rise first. So the people in Jesus' company, even though he is the Lord of the angel army, they will be men just like you and me. The ones who have died will join him from heaven and the ones who are still alive will be caught up with him and that is the reason why it is 60 because 6 is the number of men and the multiple of 6 and 10 is 60 because we're talking about men that have been tested and tried. Does it make sense? So we know without a doubt unequivocally that we're talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus in the book of Songs of Solomon. When we were in high school, the book of Songs of Solomon was only useful to us when we want to go and talk to girls. We start quoting all the sweet lines there. But in reality, there aren't many things more prophetic than the book of Songs of Solomon. In any case, this is where we're really going, verse 8. So now you're beginning to see that verse 8 makes more sense once you have that context. The Bible says they all hold swords being expert in war. Huh. You want to be in Jesus' company when he comes. You cannot be a prosperity and Jesus has forgiven me so I can always sin kind of believer. No, you have to be a believer whose fingers have been taught to fight and whose hands are skilled at war. So you wonder why you unlike the other Christian that goes to the other church, he's always having to deal with troubles because God is preparing you to be in his army. You have to be tested and tried. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. You have to be tested and tried. I know people who have tried to make me feel bad by telling me that, ah, why am I sitting with you all the time? You've gone through things that we, 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 we've only read about. Why am I sleeping you all the time? But I count it all joy because the Bible says count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and trials because the working of your faith 
It's a trial of your faith to produce patience and ultimately what? Godliness. A godly character. So here you have it. You have to be an expert in war. I don't want you to miss out on what God asked for you in 2023. One of the things that have become viral online this 2022 ending is that people are asking God to make life easy for them in 2023. Have you seen one of them videos? People are like, God, I know that you said you like to give difficult things to your strong men. I am not one of them. As I am, you can tell. Just give me the soft side of life. And some people by so doing have with their own mouths resigned themselves from the army of Christ. One of the qualifications for being in the army of the Lord Jesus Christ is difficulty. The Bible says no man that is at war entangles himself in the affairs of this world. Therefore, as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus, you need to learn how to endure hardship. It's in your Bible. I'm not pronouncing doom. I'm just telling you that if you would learn to endure the difficult situations of a couple of years, when the glorious, when you come to the glorious appearing of the Son of Man, you will be one of his 60 men. One of his valiant men. You will be one of the ones that Jesus is confident. He's not looking back when he's writing. I've seen, and I know that he's not looking back when he's writing. He gave us a demonstration of that in the life of Gideon. If Gideon had gone to battle with those 22,107 people or whatever their number is, he would have had to look back all the time and then himself would have been cut into pieces. So God cut them down from what? Who's the Bible scholar here? 22,000 plus? They were even originally more than that. He cut them down to 300. Why? Because the 300, what was the qualification? They were the ones who had their hands on their swords as they, as they drank. The other touts were lapping with their hands and face in the water. The pleasure-loving believers. And that's why the Bible says in the last days, men shall become lovers of pleasure more than they are lovers of God. Because God is setting up all kinds of tests to weed out the people who are not ready to take out evil from the world once and for all. Because this Armageddon that is coming, this Armageddon is about the end of evil forever. Evil will be done away with to the point wherein even Satan would have to retire. The Bible says for a thousand years you'll be bound. There's nothing to do. For a thousand years you'll be bound. Even though after a thousand years it's going to be released again and you know, it is what it is. But at least we enjoy a thousand years. Yeah. But I know why he's going to be released. It's going to be released because after a thousand years, the earth has to be completely destroyed and God needs, God needs a destroyer because the thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He was made for that purpose, so he needs to come and fulfill his assignment. But by that time, we will be in the waiting room for the new heavenly Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. All righty, so I'm going to close on this note and we're going to break bread. The Bible says, because of the fear of the night. So I told you that some of these things I will begin to tell you, the only one that I have time really to share tonight is that the places that the Lord has taken me in the last couple of days is wherein I have seen the night. And it is not pretty. Even today I sat somewhere in the house today and it just, I just felt it again. It stinks, the darkness that is coming upon the earth. We think we have seen darkness, yes, but we haven't seen gross darkness. The Bible says in the last days, darkness will cover the earth and then a layer of gross darkness will cover the people. And it has to happen before the end comes, wherein people's hearts are so dull and void of light that now they think that they are God. You know that the, the darkness that's come on the hearts of men now has convinced many people under this new age deception that they are gods and they have to do their own will. And we think that is bad. What is coming is worse. And the Lord showed it to me. You know the next step of what's coming? It has already started a little bit. If you have the nose for it, you will sense it. They only, they don't, they don't just want to be gods. They want your worship. I'm going to say that again slowly. Not only do they want to be gods, they want your worship. They want you to bow to their agenda. They want you to say yes to all their immorality. And if you don't, they will promise you hell and even try to deliver it. That is why we are the church of Laodicea, the church of the judgment of the people. It's going to be interesting. But we are not afraid. Amen. Because this is opportunity for us to develop different abilities in the spirit. You need to learn different ways to slice the enemy. Come on. Come on. So don't be afraid. 
We are going to pray tonight. I don't want you to pray for softness. I want you to pray for strength. Because Jesus says to him who overcomes, shall we give the crown? Do you want the crown or do you just want to show up with a robe alone? I want the crown. I want the crown because a thousand years is too long to live without the authority of a royal priesthood. I don't want people sending me on errands for a thousand years. The only person I want to be answerable to is the almighty God himself. And to do that, I have to have a crown on my head. And there's enough room for everybody. This is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom, in the kingdom of heaven, we can all be kings. That's God's desire. But if you choose not to be a king because you're not ready to fight, then it's okay. There's room for you too. Because the Bible says that we will sit on thrones and reign with Jesus upon the children of disobedience. I say yes to battle. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay, alrighty. Uh, we're going to read Isaiah 3 to break bread. Actually, you know what? Let me, let, let's do something else instead. Come with me to Songs of Solomon chapter 8, verse 11. And we're going to just, I want you to just let us sink in your heart. We're not going to teach around it, but we're going to break bread with that sinking in your heart. What does it say? It says Solomon had a vineyard at, at Baal Haman. He leased the vineyard to keepers. Everyone was to bring four, everyone was to bring for its fruit a thousand silver coins. The emphasis here is that Solomon, representing the Prince of Peace himself in this context, leased his vineyard to keepers. There is need for us to take responsibility, but then at the same time, we cannot be guilty when we drop the ball. So what do we do? We recognize that instead of bringing the thousand silver coins, there is a price that we cannot pay and Jesus has paid it. And to always just recognize that whatever is required of me to fulfill my assignment, Jesus already paid the price. I just need to keep going. So let us rise up and break bread together. And don't forget that as we get ready to pray tonight, we are taking the posture of those who are ready to make a commitment to the Lord to keep going in 2022, 2023, regardless of what happens, by your hand or by the hand of another. Take responsibility wherever you're dropping the ball and repent, but for your repentance to be quick, to be thorough, and to be genuine, you cannot allow the slippery gloss of guilt to wrap around your fingers. Let yourself be reminded that without the breath of God, you are nothing but dust. And so what do you do? Let the dead bury the dead. But you, Jesus says, follow me. Keep moving. Shake off the beast into the fire. 2023, move at the word of the Lord. There's always a word of God to instruct your very next action. Listen for it and it will come. And in the midst of all of these things, I dare to say to you that the Lord is looking for soldiers who will have their hands on their sword all the time. People who are ready to battle depression into the ground, who are ready to battle any kind of fallen glory. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In whatever way the enemy wants to introduce or life wants to introduce to you a state of a fallen glory, wherein you're not measuring up to the full stature of Christ. Battle it to the ground, knowing fully well that Jesus said it is finished. All you have to do is take in the life that he has given to you, even the glorified life, and keep going. Keep going. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this particular moment that we're in. I want you to just give God thanks for his blood. Thank Jesus for his blood that was shed. Thank him for the blood of the Lamb. Oh, give him thanks, give him thanks, give him thanks. Give him praise, give him praise, give him thanks, give him thanks, give him praise. Father, with the mighty name of Jesus, Samon Dodush, Otalev, Uz Untush, Olavri, Okums, Ambokush, Tibolon Dorike, the Brande, Hisi, Labande, Tish, Kotom, Radakan, Demos, Tupla Varede. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to say to the Lord in your own words. 
I am not stopping. I am moving forward because you commanded it. It is the commandment of God for you to go forward. He says in his word, go forth. He says, go forth. Communion House for us, 2023 is our year, is our year of going forth. We don't allow anything to be too wonderful for us. We take it in and we go. We don't allow anything to be too dis disappointing. We let it go and we go forward. We will take responsibility without being guilty so that we can keep going forward. We will celebrate the moments of great wonders, but we don't build tabernacles there. We keep going forward. The fact that you led someone to the, to the Lord last week doesn't mean you take a break for another 17 years because we don't even have that luxury. What do you do? You keep going forward. We do not stop at anything. We keep going forward. Even when we stop as the Good Samaritan to help the fallen, once we get them into the inn, we don't stay there, we go forward. Father, we thank you because it is time for the kingdom to come and we are going to it. We are pressing in, we are going forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this moment. You may eat of the Lord's body and drink of his blood in remembrance of him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Alrighty. So we have full 30 minutes. Please don't sit down yet. I want us to just stay standing and we're going to go into the first prayer. So I'm going to lead the first prayer. Sorry if I threw all of your order off. Well, after me, you can then come up. Okay? So this is the first prayer that we're going to say. I'm, I'm going to let you all collect the uh, thing so that no one is distracted. Praise the Lord. Ariel, you're going to pray with us? Come on now. Let's go. Praise God. So this is what we're going to do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, let me, let's do this. Let's read that verse of scripture again. And I'll tell you what we skipped the other time. Songs of Solomon, chapter 3. Songs of Solomon chapter 3. How many people here have read Songs of Solomon before? Praise God. It's a very wonderful book. But now you may want to read it again so that you can catch up on the prophecies of the Songs of Solomon. Now, Mamburudo skitili and the shitalemondo bruku skitili the vrush ile dombra badi muskum talanderi yelemonda. Father, we give you praise. So you see, what did we read? Songs of Solomon chapter three. Where did we stop? We stopped at verse eight. It says, every man was ready with, this, with their hand on their sword or with their sword on their thighs because of the fear of the night. What do people typically do when they're afraid? They become weak, right? When people are afraid, they become weak. So it is possible for you, and it is actually expected by God, for you and I to turn around and do the opposite of what is natural. Let me say that again. Daniel, when he saw the great tribulation, he says, men will say that it is over. He says, they will say there is a casting down, but then you will say, there is a lifting up. They're like, oh my God, the fire is here to consume us. And you're like, no, the fire is here to propel us because we are going up. You understand what I mean? And so in order for you to not become sorrowful at the darkness and the gross darkness, that means the polarity of your charge needs to be opposite to that of the world. So that whenever they are becoming fearful, you will become strong. The same darkness that will make people lose their cool completely and, and just become paralyzed is the same sound that you will hear and you will smile with your chest out. It is high time people know the difference between those who have God and those who don't. 
we have been walking around like chickens, all of us. But now it's time for the world to know who the real eagles are. So how are we going to change the polarity? Come with me to verse 11. If I, I want to read very quickly through 9 and 10 so that 11 will make sense immediately. The Bible says of the word, of the wood of Lebanon, Solomon the king made himself a palanquin. He made its pillars of silver, its support of gold, its seat of purple, its interior paved with love by the daughters of Jerusalem. You see, what he built was a structure for royalty to allow for them to remain on top. But what is the exercise? What does it involve? It involves you embracing the things of integrity that will stand the test of time, gold, and it also involves you being overlaid with love on your inside. So this is how you're going to prepare yourself in the evil days by doing these things, by having pillars of silver, support of gold, a seat of purple. What is the seat of purple? Seat of purple represents your royalty as a priest unto your God. So what does it mean? How does that translate into everyday life? We're going to pray all these things within about five minutes, okay? So just remember them. And if you don't, just open the scripture and read it again. You see, God has called you to be a royal priesthood. And when you are royalty, you don't behave like peasants. Peasants are the ones who drag themselves to court. Peasants are the ones who keep being jealous of each other all the time. Because what they have is finite. And the moment someone has more than them, they feel threatened because they don't know how to sustain. But when you are royalty, all those things don't mean anything because everything is yours. So there's nothing anybody has that makes you feel bad because the Bible says all things are yours. When there is an issue, you, you, as, as a king, you feel, you, you feel irresponsible to be talking to some other people about another person. No. You are a king. And so what do you do? You take your matter to the king of kings. Stop talking to people who do not have the solution. It is not befitting of you as a royalty. You understand what I mean? If my wife does something that I do not like, what do I do? I talk to God about it. Even though sometimes I still talk to her, I'm like, hey, I don't like that. You understand what I mean? If it is something that I know she can fix, right? If I'm like, hey, I keep putting my phone here, but you keep putting it there. I put it here for a reason. You understand what I mean? And she can be like, oh, I didn't know, and that settles it. But if it's something that transcends her ability, what do I do? I talk to the one. Solomon said something profound. He said, Lord, by arguing, we have proven nothing. He says, but show each of us where we have gone wrong. That is how to escalate your issues and let the one who is the king of kings bring solution. So you have to remain, and it's not just called a robe of purple, it's called a seat of purple. And you know why it is a seat? Because you must stop handling situations in 2023 in a restless fashion. When you're angry, just sit down first. When you don't have all the facts, sit down. Your royalty, you're not supposed to be pacing back and forth like someone waiting for a job and hoping that they will call him back for the interview. No, you are royalty, sit down. The Bible says it is a seat of purple. It is a seat of royalty. Sit down until all the angst leave your body. The devil will come to tempt you. Emotions will want to raise their ugly heads. No, you sit down because you're royalty. Everybody will wait for you. Yeah, Nobody is in a hurry for you to make a decision. Even if they are, you don't be in a hurry to make a decision. Sit down. Rather than say, oh, I'm not going to let them get away with that statement. The last thing they said, and, and, no, let them get away. If they go, they will come back. My mom would normally say when we were growing up, she would say that issue that you're hiding from the king will be resolved by the king. Eventually, you will bring it here. So when we're hiding our results, when we haven't done well at school, you hide it, but eventually you still have to bring it yourself. So wait. Be in your seat of purple. You can pray all those ones at home. I think I've, I've repented. You will pray those ones at home, but there's one thing that I want us to pray here. 
Somebody keeps opening my Bible to Isaiah and I don't want to go to Isaiah because I'm being mindful of time. It has a lot that is bubbling within me and I know it's in Isaiah and I'm like, ah, not today. Otherwise, we'll be here till midnight. So here is the deal, y'all. Let's go back to verse, verse, um, verse 10. It says, its interior is paved with love. This is where you need to pay attention because this thing sounds like it's controversial or contradictory, but in fact is a mystery for excellence. I want you to pay attention. The Bible says that the inside or the interior is paved with love. What is your interior? Your heart. Your heart has to be paved with love for people. Even when they are behaving foolishly. I mean, imagine how foolish we are sometimes and God still loves us. Romans chapter 3 verse 5 says why we were yet sinners. Even whilst we were the enemies of God, Jesus died for us. Because the inside of God is love. Imagine if your inside is paved with love, you will be a strong soldier. Because they can't frustrate you very easily when you love. They can try, but the Bible says love bears all things. Yeah? There are people that you've helped, they disappoint you, they persecute you, they go around talking bad about you, and then when they have nowhere else to go, they come back to you. And you're like, oh, I knew you were going to come back. I've been waiting for this moment. No, the Bible says, be like your heavenly father who said, whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Let them come. As long as they recognize that they have been foolish and they have come back, embrace them. Let them find your inside paved with love. Now, this is the part of it that I said is controversial. The Bible tells us how your inside will be paved with love. It says, by the daughters of Jerusalem. <laughs> We're going to quickly pray where you're at. I, I want you to say, Father, thank you for the daughters of Jerusalem. Thank you for the daughters of Jerusalem. Because by their ministry, love has formed inside of me. Who was speaking here? The Shulamite woman. And how did the daughters of Jerusalem treat the Shulamite woman? They looked down upon her. They spoke bad about her. They formed all kinds of alliances against her. And yet, the Bible is letting us know that by all of that which they did, love was formed inside of her. I am stronger today because of what they did to me. <laughs> I am stronger today because of what they did to me. I know where my sword is because of what they could do tomorrow. I have my sword on my thigh because I know their hearts are evil. Yeah. That is why I have my God because of their intentions. And in the same way, because of the fact that I cannot go to my heavenly father, begrudging them in my heart. So because of the fact that I know they would still try to frustrate me and lie about me and, and tell horrible things and be unthankful and be ungrateful, guess what? I have filled my heart with love so that I do not allow them to cost me eternity. Uh, you see what I mean? Yeah, you prayed for them, miracles happened, they never came back to say thank you. What do you do? You fill your heart with love. If not, you will show up in your heavenly father's presence and you're carrying a grudge and God is like, who is this person? I was reading one of the prophecies of, of Enoch and when four angels, Gabriel, it was Michael, Gabriel, Sergeant, and Urgent, they went to the Lord and they were like, God, we know you know all things. But how have you allowed these people to get away with foolishness? <laughs> what did the Lord say? He says, those bastards. He used the word, in translation, it, why did he say that? It, the reason why he said that was because they were no longer behaving like his sons. He says, I don't know them. They're not my children. They're bastards. A bastard means an illegitimate child. I don't want to show up before God and look like a bastard. I want to look like his son and God is love. So the reason why my insight is now overlaid with love is because I have seen the potentials of the daughters of Jerusalem, how malicious they can be, and I don't want them to cost me eternity because of unforgiveness. So how do you get equipped? Because of difficult situations, because of the trouble that the world brings. 
So do you know now, do you want to complain about the trouble or do you want to give thanks? Do you want to shy away from a difficult situation or do you want to brace yourself up and say, this is so that the Lord might be glorified. As we go into 2022, this is what I want us to pray. 2023, verse 11. This one gets me beyond excited. What does it say? It says, go forth, O daughters of Zion. What is the difference between Zion and Jerusalem? In case you don't know, Zion is where God is. Jerusalem was supposed to be a copy of Zion, but because of the daughters of the city and because of the failure of the fathers to uphold integrity, it now gets mentioned separate to Zion. Okay? And so when you look at the way people behave in the church, sometimes it is opposite of what God intends. But you are supposed to maintain your position in Zion, in righteousness, in integrity, in love, in kindness, and in all manners of favors. You need to remain favorable. Do not withhold your hand when you can bless just because of their malice. The Bible says, go forth. Let me say that again. Do not withhold your hand because of their malice. If they're in trouble, help them. If they come to you, do not cast them away. Be filled with love. So let's pray this scripture that says, go forth O daughters of Zion and see King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him on the day of his wedding, the day of the gladness of his heart. The day of the gladness of the heart of Jesus is when? When he comes to receive us. He says, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the wine until I receive you into my father's kingdom. And we're talking about the fact that he is coming and we need to remain daughters of Zion. So I want you to pray and say, Lord, in 2023, I will stand my ground in obedience. I will stand my ground in integrity. I will stand my ground in love. I would allow my pillars to be of silver. I would allow my ornaments to be of gold. I would ensure that I do not meddle with things of emotions, of irrationality of the flesh nor anything else that is temporal but my actions and my confidence will be on the things that are eternal your love the grace to forgive the mercy to allow for me to continue to be favorable Lord let every guile be emptied out of me and let my heart be filled and overlaid with your love so that when they come they will not be able to pain any offense on me when they come they will not be able to pain any malice into me because I'm already filled with love. I thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus because as a daughter of Zion, I will stand breathing in the air of your presence, taking in your spirit all the time, allowing myself to take a break from acting on impulse and allowing myself to be led by your Holy Spirit. Lord, I will not be uprooted from the seat of royalty in 2023, but I will sit as a king and rightfully judge matters. I will sit as a king in righteousness and not not judge because of how I feel and not judge because of what they've done but I will judge with a righteous judgment I will be loving I will be kind I will be merciful as you are merciful father in the mighty name of Jesus and in all of these things I will be strong against the intentions of evil I will be strong against the actions of foolishness I will be strong against the plots of wickedness because you are with me and I thank you father because you have revealed to me what is in their heart you have revealed to me the plan of Satan I will not allow darkness to overtake me in the land of the living but I will keep pressing on as the light that I am shining forth without the darkness being able to comprehend me I will keep going as the salt that I am not losing my seasoning power so that when you come you will find my fruits preserved no corruption will I bring before you O God but in righteousness and in truth I will bring the fruits that you have least this field for me for I will deliver in the mighty name of Jesus Father I thank you because you have leased out the field to us so that we can present our fruits and whatever price needs to be paid you have already paid so that we can deliver the payload in the mighty name of Jesus praise the Lord God is good I'm going to hand off the baton now otherwise we're going to be here for another two hours because my heart is overflowing with a good theme. But I want to encourage you folks, these things that you have heard, do not let go of them. Maybe in another day or two, what's today, Saturday, by tomorrow, God willing, this video, the entire thing, including this long prayer, is going to be available for you to watch again. Meditate on these things and make sure that you are going forward 
in 2023 in the mighty name of Jesus. There are four sets of people in here that I want to pray for very quickly. I want to pray for the people who have an expectation that in 2023, that the work of their hands will be blessed. I want to pray for you very quickly. I sought the Lord and he's given me the go ahead to share with you, I believe, you're ready for it too, praise God, I believe, that you can call forth a future blessing. In the current times that we're in, according to the timing of men, your, your seed sown at best yields only a hundredfold. The Bible says, and the ground it's by itself brought forth an increase. Some a 30-fold, some a 60-fold, some a hundredfold. But in the world to come, whatever we put into the ground, the, the word of God says, will yield 10,000-fold. And I said to the Lord, can we access it now? He says, yes, you can. Because your heavenly Father has promised to bless you according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The measure of your blessing has a coefficient that is the glory of Christ, which is eternal. And because it's eternal, you can access any aspect of time, past, present, and future. And so what do you do? If you have an increased expectation in your heart, for 2023, I pray for you that in the mighty name of Jesus, that your heart will be able to receive, by faith, the increase of the millennia. In the mighty name of Jesus, the 10,000 fold increase, let it come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, this next group of people that I want to pray for, if you feel the need to come forward, I will lay my hands on you. But I want to pray for the people who have suffered too many trips, I mean too many tripping in the last year. In the last year, you keep finding yourself tripping. You fall and stumble on things that you have sworn that will not happen again. You keep saying to yourself, oh, I'm going to overcome this. Next time that happens, oh, I will do better. If you have been tripping and tripping and tripping, and one of the things you desire for 2023 is consistency, I want to pray for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who's controlling that music? Is it you, Joshua? Oh, okay. You can keep it going, but just um, reduce the volume. Okie dokie. Now, I want to say something to you. You can live here with the power to overcome, but you need to be resolute. Okay? And this is what I'm going to pray for you. But I want you to understand it first so that you can say amen from the bottom of your heart. And what I'm going to pray for you is for you to have an understanding by godly wisdom that the you that trips and falls... It's not the one God is asking to go forth. Let me say that again and I want you to get it. You see, there is a you that God is asking to go forth. And that you is the daughter of Zion. And Zion is God's presence. So the you that God is expecting to go forth is seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father where there is no obstruction. The Bible says there are mountains to climb and there are rivers I mean, there are valleys to walk. But before me, there is an open door. So if there is an open door, if everything has been leveled, the crooked paths have been made straight, then why do I stumble? It is yet not I, but sin that reigns in my members. The weakness that causes you to stumble is the old man. The fear that causes you to stumble is the old man. The inabilities that cause you to stumble is the old man. And the Lord is saying in 2023, you will move forward and go forth by learning how to separate yourself from the old and live in the new. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the old is living in guilt, but the new has been justified. So Lord, this divine sense of justification, let it rain upon their hearts. And so by so doing, Lord, it will be pointless for the enemy to cause them to stumble because whether they stumble or not, they will keep going. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we neutralize the effect of every stumble, of every fall, of every disappointment, of every shame, 
of the past in the mighty name of Jesus. It is already neutralized by the blood of the Lamb and we embrace that justification in the mighty name of Jesus. In 2023, you will be consistent at soaring as an eagle. In 2023, you will walk and you will not faint. You will run and you will not be weary. In 2023, you will walk upon your high places because it is in Him that you live and move and have your being in the mighty name of Jesus. Every one of those weights and sin that so easily besets you is now beneath you because in Christ Jesus you are seated in righteousness. You are robed in righteousness and seated in peace. You will no longer stumble as you have been because now you are allowing yourself to be in the spirit and not in the flesh. The Bible says walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Receive that divine understanding that you may be empowered therein in the mighty name of Jesus. Consistency is your lot in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that your heavenly father is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. There is no better definition of consistency than that. And Jesus says, as I am, so are you. And he is the one who was, who is, and is to come. And so I want you to embrace that nature of Christ and say, I will no longer stumble. Once I've started, I will finish. I want you to declare and say, I receive the fruits of one who has the spirit of a finisher. I will bear fruits of a finisher. The things that have begun, not the ones that I have, the things that have begun in my life by the word of God will be complete by the same. It is all God at work in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I am riding upon my high places in 2023 in the mighty name of Jesus where the crooked paths have been made straight, where the valleys have been filled, where the mountains have been made low so that I can go on unrestricted, uninhibited. I am going forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Now the third set of people that I want to pray for right here is I see you and it's almost as if every time you're about to lay hold of that which you know is a promise of God for you. It gets taken from you. I can see you. I want you to stay here, Jordan. I want to pray for you. And I'm going to pray for anybody else that wants to stay here. Because what I see is you are about to lay hold of it. And then the next thing is it goes and you're wondering, what am I doing wrong? I want to pray for you today. And again, just like the last time, if you want to understand the prayer, I want you to listen. What I'm going to pray for concerning this subject is that you will resign from being God and let God to be God. You see, the Lord's been speaking to me about this particular prayer point, I would say maybe about two days. So I'm going to tell you what it really is. Many a times the reason why God has not allowed you to attain is because you keep thinking it will be because of you. Come on. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. It is not of him who wills, it is not of him who runs, but it is of God who shows mercy. By your willpower, you cannot overcome that addiction. By your willpower, you cannot attain that next level of righteousness or prosperity or goodness or favor. No, you cannot. God has given you an opportunity to be a co-laborer with him as a fruit bearer, not as a fruit producer. The Lord Jesus himself produces the fruit because he's divine and you're the branches. And what, do the branch, what does the branch do? The branch just bears the fruit. Like, here it is. Here is the fruit. And so the Lord needs to, you need to let the Lord do that work in your heart. You need to resign. You are not God, he is. All you have to do is give him thanks and say, God, even though I, it felt like I was almost there and it was taken, but I know you are always there. Some will just wait and let you bring it to me because you are God. Because if you want to keep chasing it, you will never find it. He says, surely goodness and mercy will follow you. God wants to bring them to you, but you think you have to go after it. So the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, let it rest upon you mightily in the name of Jesus. Okay, I'm going to read this because the Lord said to me to read it, Genesis 7, 11, and I'm like, eh, I don't think we have time, but now we need it. Genesis 7-11, <clears throat> you will see where this peace 
was introduced to us. Or one of the places, rather, wherein it was introduced to us. One of the very first places, I believe. Genesis chapter 7, verse 11. And the Bible says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the 17th day of the month, on the day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. The windows of heaven, they were open. Let me tell you what was going on. Noah and the rest of them were itching to get out of that ark. But every time it looks like they should step out, is that the bird goes and never comes back? Or it comes back with nothing? And it's like, oh my God, when are we going to get out of here? But it was in the day of Noah. And the Bible, see, when God chooses to mention someone's name, know that it's prophesying to you. Noah means rest. In the day of your rest, the Lord will bring you that which you desire. So design from being the one to work it and embrace rest. See, rest is not laziness. You can't even work with God if you are restless. You see, if you think, oh, I need to study 55 chapters of the Bible in one day, and you think you're going to do it by your own ability, you won't receive anything because you are going to be, your muscles will get in the way. But when you are rested and you say, God, I'm going to just stay here and let your word come into me. Now you're resting in your ability. Even if it's one chapter that you read, give God thanks for it. Because sometimes it tests your heart to see whether there is contentment. Because without contentment, there is no great gain. You understand what I mean? So rest in him and the heavens will open. So Father, who are the people standing? Okay, praise God. I want you to come as quickly as possible because I said I would lay my hands on you. If you came the first time and I didn't lay my hands on you, come now. Okay, this is what the Lord would have me do. There is a fourth group of people. So y'all are the third group of people, right? The fourth group of people, they need to give glory to God. You can resign from being God and still not give glory to God. Because you have to give glory to God. The 24 elders, they were crowned authorities in heaven. And I'm one of those people who believe that they represent us, the ones who are saved. Why? Because while they were singing... They said let, they were giving glory to the one who saved them by his blood. So every one of us who are saved by the blood of Jesus, regardless of what dimension you are from, you are supposed to recognize that the glory belongs to him. So what did they do? They put down all of their crowns and they gave glory to God. You can put down your crown and still sit down. Some people do that. They're like, okay, I'm not even going to worry, but they're not giving glory to God. I want to teach you through this prayer point how to be a person of faith. Because faith is calling the things that aren't as though they were so that they can, they can be. All those things that you are chasing, begin to give glory to God as though you know he's faithful and he will do it. So this year, I want to pray for you to receive the garment of praise to replace the spirit of heaviness. 2023 will be your year of praise. 2023 will be your year of supernatural praise and gratitude. You will be grateful to God. Now, I want to give you an opportunity if you still need to be part of this last group of people. If you want your heart to be alien to fear, even when fear wants to come, it will not be able to purge because your heart is always burning with praise and glory to God. I want you to tap into that grace at this very moment. Because we need to go forth. You see, in scripture, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, every time it was, they were meant to move, Kanida, every time they were meant to move, who moves first? Judah moves first. And Judah means praise. When God is ready to move in your life, you need to praise him. And so you are stepping into your year of divine gratitude. By the Holy Spirit, you will remember the goodness of God. You will not forget his benefits. And as you remember, your mouth will not complain, but give thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that you can lay hold of that which your heavenly father brings for you. Because he has done it. He's the one performing it. In his rest, you will receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Because it is time for this woman to rest in you. I want you to receive rest. 
Be confident in God. And let your heart just know that faithful is he who has promised. Receive rest in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your lips be loosed to praise God in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, rest in him. Let his wind carry you farther than you can paddle in the mighty name of Jesus. Farther than you can move. Hey, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray that this woman's eyes will be open to see your glory. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Jordan here, she will see your hand. In the mighty name of Jesus, be still, the Lord says, and know that I am God. He says, I will bring to you where you're at. Just be at peace. Everything that has eluded you up until now, the Lord has for you in 2023 that your life not be dependent on the words of men so that you are no longer disappointed. Your stance in God is dependent on the word and the promises of the word of God. And you will not be disappointed in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the year wherein you receive and you embrace. It is this year in the mighty name of Jesus. This is your year of fullness in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, when I say fullness, I'm not just talking about fullness hypothetically, but I'm saying this year you'll be full. You will be full, lacking nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because this one right here, you see, you have some experiences that you have desired. Some places that you want to go and you're always like, oh, I wish we would do this. I wish I could do that. I wish I could. You see, you've been wishing. The Lord says, I know you're wishing, but I want you to bring them to me and ask and I will do it. This is that year wherein your desires go beyond wishes to becoming an engagement with God in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because this woman, this man, and the woman that you have given to him and their entire household will experience your tangible presence. I know you have been desirous of a divine encounter. You have been saying, Lord, when will you visit me? When will you show me great and mighty things which I do not know? The Lord is going to visit you in a big way in 2023 in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, the Lord showed me the desire. You see, sometimes when you're praying, you listen. You're like, is he going to say something now? The Lord says, yes, I've seen your hunger and thirst. And he's coming through for you. He will visit you. You will run out of the room and say, and be looking for somebody to tell that the Lord was here. I knew that I saw him. I knew that I heard him. This is your year of a divine encounter in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. Oh, yes, see, one of the things that I see you desirous of, you're standing in the presence of God. I say, God, I would love for us to have this conference wherein, you know, people will come, they will be blessed. You really want people to know that God is with us. And this 2023, You see, when I tell you that the Lord will bring to you, even some things that you have been told or that you've concluded is probably not going to happen. It will happen. In fact, some of them will be the first things to happen because God really wants to strengthen your faith. You see, God's call upon your life. It's clear to you. You know what it is. But it's almost as if it's like, okay, if, if what God wants me to do and who he wants me to be is this clear, how come this is missing and that is missing? And the Lord is saying it is not yours to focus on what it takes. Just focus on who takes you there. You understand what I mean? You know what I mean? You know that God has shown you things about yourself that are clear. The things that are unclear are what you have considered the requirements. And the Lord says, I am the one who will perform it. Psalms 55 or 7, God says he will perform it. So rest in him. Let your focus be on him. Desire to see his face. Just when you sit down sometimes, just imagine that you can see his face. He will show you his goodness. Where is man and leader? So get ready. Because let me tell you something. Every one of those people that you have seen, that you are seeing, you want them to recognize that the word of, God, of the Lord is true. That the call of the Lord is genuine. The Lord will glorify himself in you as you have glorified him. He will glorify himself in you. This 2023 in the mighty name of Jesus. It is time for you to reap. You understand what I mean? You have sown. Why don't you come closer? You have sown, 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 you have sown. What I see is, you see, certain things that you've been doing, the Lord's been watching and the Lord's been equipping others to serve you so that you can enjoy the fruit of the harvest. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, I know that jokingly sometimes you tell me to stop talking because you can no longer laugh any more than you're laughing. I know you say that jokingly, but the Lord showed it to me that you would go to God and say, God, I'm, I'm laughing so much it almost hurts. And that's because the Lord is bringing you such a laughter that you need supernatural strength to actually be able to engage in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the year of fulfillment in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Lord, I thank you because this man is ready. Yes, he is ready. He is ready. You know, there are times we're in. <laughs> we are ready and waiting. And that's where you're at. You're ready and waiting. You know, you're one of those that the Lord has spoken to me concerning who were not even aware of how much God was doing in them. Thinking that they were behind and the Lord is saying, if only he knows how ahead he is by my working. And you are one of those people. And when that veil is open, your voice will be musical. You see, the Lord has you behind the stage just waiting for the time of the curtains to be lifted. You will sing and your voice will be musical. You will dance and there will be healing in your steps. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because this man is ready by your hand by your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. It will make the crooked path straight. Be ready because you will hear the sound of the leveling of the mountains. You will hear the sound of the leveling of the hills because the Lord has chosen to level the ground before you. You will not be leveled along with it but he will prepare you. He will prepare you in the first quarter of it. So be ready for an accelerated draining wherein the Lord will remove from you the things that are not meant to be a part of you, ideologies, thoughts, whatever it is, even the things that are not supposed to be part of you physically, emotionally, the Lord is getting rid of so that when you stand, every weakness that has kept you back will make room for strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Now the desire to see this moment, Lord, I thank you. Open your eyes and look up. The scrolls are open above you. In the mighty name of Jesus. As soon as I placed my hand on him, I heard the cry of that desire. And he said that I may see. And just like the sun. <laughs> that asked and says, son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus says, what may I do for you? He said that I may see. You said that you may see and the Lord has heard and you will see in the mighty name of Jesus. Where's Tyler? Lord, in Jesus' name, I skipped you because you needed to hear that first. That you may see. The things that you have seen so far have been mostly the things that are open on the table. You have seen that which is already open on the table, but the Lord says now you will also see that which is being revealed. And that which is being revealed is not just for your eyes, it is for your face. It will melt upon you as oil and it will enable you. It will give you wings with which to soar upon your high grounds. E okomtaya. You know what that means? It means divine enablement. It means God, God, God in himself has chosen to bring you the equipping that you need. You have weights that you have not been able to carry, that you have come under very heavily. And the Lord is saying, no, I am giving you wings and those things will become light. Your body will become light. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Tyler, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You have waited upon the Lord and today is the day of mercy. Salvation begins now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Ah, I saw you earlier today. Makundo di omon kundun de di ramakamon stundele de rike de mandebuk umstele ingi di mongureba. I remember, but the Lord says it's not time to say. But I, I knew that I saw you while I was before the Lord today. And I know what he has shown to me. And when the time comes in the presence of many witnesses, I will share with you the fulfillment. Because what I see is pointing to you and saying, that was what the Lord showed to me. But you continue to wait upon the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you because you are the performer of promise. Amen. 
You are the performer of promise in the mighty name of Jesus. Every entanglement, every cobweb of Satan that makes you uncomfortable, that makes you restricted, I declare them broken. I declare them blown away by the wind of God's mercy. By the wind of his peace, they will be blown away. And you will stand purified and ready for the master's use. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are free for whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And nobody can put as much as a thread on you when the Lord sets you free. He has cleared the cobwebs so that you can shine as a vessel of crystals before the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Peace. Let your heart know the peace of God. Your heart, this moment, I see it like a sponge and it is soaking up the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will be at peace in the mighty name of Jesus. And so Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that which you have shown to me, let her eyes see first in a dream. Let her see it the way it will play out, not so that she can take control from you, but that she may rest in your process. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Oh, even that process seems like a mystery, but don't worry, when you see it, your spirit will know and be at peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the weights fall off these shoulders. I want you to experience that peace right now in the mighty name of Jesus. That's it. Experience that peace. Take it in. Breathe it in. It is the air that is around you right this moment. Breathe it in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Keep the vision alive. Keep it alive. Keep it alive. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will perform it. Keep it alive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lay your hands upon your priest when you get home. Lay your hands on your boys. You see, because they will be players and agents in this peace process. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will see their peace and you will be at peace. Their scars will disappear. And they will lift up their heads and recognize that they have come to a new place. In the name of Jesus. I see them looking around and say, where is this? It is a new place. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Oh, <laughs> You know what I see? I see a big truck and it looks like it's about to cross from one territory into another. You see, it might seem like you woke up one day and every single thing that you ordered from God just arrived in the same truck. You see, they will come at the same time. And that truck is crossing into the territory of your peace. It's coming from the place where you ordered it and it will deliver. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Bible says there is nothing that compares to a good news from a far country. In the mighty name of Jesus, peace be multiplied unto you. Make room, begin to make room. Begin to prepare to have Bible studies with the ones you love. Begin to prepare yourself to pray for them because they will ask for it. They will come and say, mom, can we pray? They will, people will come to you just because they want to hear the word of the Lord that is in your mouth. And that is, those are the things that you have desired, the things that you have ordered, is this sweet fellowship, is this sweet communion. And the Lord says, it is being brought to you that which you ordered in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. You see, it is not your place to worry about the things that you do not see. You're like, I don't know what's going on over there. I don't know what's going on over there. I see you standing behind the wall and you're peeking, you're trying to see, you're trying to see. The Lord says, do not worry. I see what is going on over there and your interest is dear to me. The Lord will protect you even from the arrows that you do not see. Let me tell you something. Even if you think that someone somewhere is saying something, what is that to you? All you care about is what your heavenly father has said. If somebody somewhere is plotting anything, what is that to you? Aren't you supposed to be here to enjoy the table that your father is preparing before you? Resign yourself from trying to know their heart. Just know the heart of God for you. 
You see, and when that peace begins to manifest, it becomes a mystery. You will become a mystery to people. People will be confused thinking about you because they're like, why is she doing that? Why is she doing that? Does she not know this? Does she not see this? No, simply because the Lord wants you to be a mystery unto them. And so why stop picking, stop trying to see men, see God. I'm saying this to you again because the Lord wants you to leave that war. You see, you have learned self-preservation, but you need to unlearn it. You understand what I mean? Unlearn self-preservation. Your pillars are not supposed to be made of wood. Wood is flesh. Your pillars are supposed to be made of silver and your items of gold, which means you have to rely on God. He'll come through for you. And you know what? I know that you desire for them to see your results so that they can know that the Lord is with you. Yes, but the Lord wants even you to know that he is with you first. And then the results will come. You will have what to show for your confidence in God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless you. Sister Natalie, I thank you because you will hear joy and gladness. And the bones that have been broken will rejoice. That word is exactly for you where you're at. The bones, some bones have been broken and you know it. But the Lord says he will make you to hear joy and gladness that the bones that are broken will rejoice. Yes, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord revealed to me that you're so confident in him that he will turn everything around for your good. Amen. Even when you have no reason to believe that he will, you just did. And the Lord honors your faith like the woman with the issue of blood. The Lord has declared that it will be unto you according to your faith. Amen. You're about to have such an enviable result. And some people will say, but you knew this was going to happen. And you would tell them, yes. And they will ask you, but how? You would just tell them, I don't know, but I just believed God. Hey. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is working for your good indeed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Lord, I see a young daughter with plaster. What, what we call, we call it, what do they call it here? Band-aid. With band-aid somewhere on the arm just there and I see the finger of God ripping the band-aid himself whatever has been administered so far by men the Lord is undoing it to bring true healing you, you see I know some things have gone into that body that shouldn't and you know it but don't worry the venom is being sucked out by the hand of God God himself is taking out what men put into the vessel. And now you can give God glory because the Lord is giving to you back the door, the door that, that, that the devil wanted to take. Yes. Just be singing, welcome home. What I see is, I see you standing. You know, just like when the two twin towers fell, some people, the tower did not fall on them, but they have lived their lives as though it did because of the fear of that moment. And the Lord is saying that I shielded you from it, now let go of any trauma. Because it didn't touch you. You saw it and, and it felt like it hit you, but it didn't. Because the Lord, should, if it had hit you, you wouldn't be here. You're here because the Lord gave you life. So continue to enjoy that life. And this time around, enjoy it to the full by giving him thanks. Give him glory. Give him glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Uh, there are questions that you have in your heart concerning your son. And I decree, I decree that you will receive the answer of the Lord so that you can partner right with the Lord in helping the man to be on his way to fulfilling destiny. You see what I mean? The Lord himself will reveal to you what it is. The questions have been answered by the Lord, even into your spirit this very moment, in the mighty name of Jesus. So you know how best to partner with God in deliverance, in intercession, in patience and kindness, but more than it all, in possessing destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, that destiny will not be lost, but it will be fulfilled because the young man has an intercessor who is standing in the gap and the Lord says, it is time. The Lord is moving in. He is moving in and when he moves in, 
every alien moves out. Arise, O God, and let your enemies be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for these households. I thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus for Scott right here. Thank you for how genuine he is in his heart. The questions that he asks, he asks because he truly wants to know so that he may be able to relate the outside world with what he sees on the inside. Let him submit to your Holy Spirit to receive divine light that brings understanding to the heart of a man so that he doesn't guess his way through life, but he knows exactly what this realm is about, that he may win at it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because this woman's imagination is being healed, is being realigned with purpose, is being realigned with fruitfulness and productivity. The Lord has given you such an amazing imagination. It's almost as if some places where people have walls, you don't. It just keeps going. Your imagination can expand and then expand again. And the Lord says it is all for his glory. And in this season that you walk into, not only will you see things, but you will see the Lord. And his messengers will guide you in your thought onto productivity. You see, your creativity will not harm you. Your creativity will no longer hurt you, will no longer be a thing of pain, but your creativity will be what announces you to greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. A renewed, a restored, a revived, and a realigned creativity be upon you this very moment in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Don't be tired of asking. Okay? The word of God says to you, ask and you shall receive. So if you haven't received, it's coming. Just ask. You see what I mean? It doesn't matter if people have said no. You don't care. You ask. You have your father's yes. You are your daddy's little girl. And he will move like you've never seen him move. He says, ask me. He said, even now, ask me. Go to your seat and ask him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Woman of God, have I prayed with you today? Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I see a file that has been put back. And I was like, is it done? Yes, I was told that it is done. You understand what I mean? You will receive a notice to let you know that the work is done. That which has been processed in your name that is to bring you plenty has been done. It's settled. They will notify you and say, woman, is this done? I see you turning to your husband and say, wow, this must be what the Lord said on the 31st. Wow, it is here now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you something. It will include that which you have been owed. It will include that which has been denied to you. This will open the door and others will follow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Alrighty, God is good. Hallelujah. Okay, well, um, all the people that are supposed to come and lead prayer points, they probably forgot their prayer points by now. So I'm going to just give them a break. Alrighty. You, you, you want to still pray? Okay, God is good. What's that? Okay, praise God. So God is good. What time is it? Already, so we are going to pray. Okay, so I was going to call you people a slack, but my wife says y'all are still praying. Oh, you want to say something? Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, come. Woo. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> praise the Lord. Well, what I wanted to say is all the. To be honest, all my prayer points, Pastor. It's talked about it. Oh, it went from <laughs> it went from joy to love to um, the way God sees us and for our eyes to be open. So you talked about it. So guys, you haven't missed anything. This is what the Lord wants us to do. I want us to give the Lord a big shout of praise. Jump on your feet and praise him and thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his faithfulness. Happy New Year! I don't know about you guys. I am so excited. We are already in the year 2023. 
I don't know about you. How are you feeling? If you didn't get a word tonight, you have your word. Go back and listen to this. And if you got personal prophecies, jump on your feet. Let the devil know this is your year of fulfillment. This is your year of the impossible becoming possible. Lift up your voice. Shout praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know about y'all, but tonight was off the chain. It was off the chain. I ain't going to hold this. We're going to tap into our offering real quick. Uh, my brother Gavin, would you help us with the slide? Thank you so much. We're going to give God thanks in our giving. And, um, you know, this is my first watch tonight. Not going into midnight. But I give God praise. You know, we're a different house. And... Um, <laughs> right. And the Lord is doing a new thing. So we, we just thank him so much. We love him so much for what he's doing. And now as the offering slide is being prepared, let's give uh, in thanks. Let's give in praise. If you need uh, an envelope, the basket is just over here. Uh, you can take that um, and be led of the spirit in your giving. We'll just wait a couple of seconds to prepare. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We love you so much. How you have come and met with us tonight, oh God, and have dealt beautifully with us. Lord, we thank you even um, for how you have prepared us even in the months past, oh God, getting ahead, how you have granted us the eye to see what's beyond, oh God, what's to come, how to navigate this place and time, but also in eternity with you. Lord, let these offerings be sweet smelling. Let them be pleasing in your sight. For we know, as we say, oh God, by your word, that you give seed to the sower, and you have given it to us, oh God. We know that all of the silver that has ever crossed our paths, all of the gold that has ever crossed us, oh God, it belongs to you anyhow. And Lord, we give back to you in glory. Father, we thank you for this time, for we know we have come to the end of the age, oh God. And we will soon see you crack the sky. Lord, we thank you for this boost in our faith, oh God. We thank you for the healing deep down in our hearts, oh God. And Lord, we even lift up the rest of this evening to you, O oh God, everyone that has come out, Lord, even those that will to come out, but for whatever reason was unable, Lord, let it touch them. Let your mercy prevail in their life, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for traveling mercies as we go to and fro tonight. O oh God, all glory and honor belong to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy New Year, everyone. Be blessed. Run with what the Lord has given you tonight, and we'll be back. What's today? Saturday. We'll be back Tuesday. All righty. Y'all have a blessed week.